Okay, in this video we're going to look at the following very, very classic theorem of Gauss. And that is, if we take a natural number, then if we sum over the positive divisors of that natural number of the Euler phi function, we get in. So we get the natural number back again. So before we look at a proof, let's look at a pretty simple example. So let's take um, n equals 6. And so that means the d's that will be in our set will be 1, 2, 3, and 6. Great. So now let's look phi of 1. And so remember, the Euler phi function counts the number of relatively prime integers between 1 and n. So phi of 1, uh, so that'll be the number of relatively prime numbers between 1 and 1. So there's only 1 and relatively prime with the number that's in there. And then phi of 2. So that's also equal to 1. Phi of 3, so that's equal to 2 because 1 and 2 are relatively prime to 3. Um, and then let's see, what else do we have? Uh, phi of 6. So in this case, we have 1 and 5. So phi of 6 will be 2. And now notice that out of that we get phi of 1 plus phi of 2 plus phi of 3 plus phi of 6. So that gives us 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 2, which is obviously 6, which is the original number that we started with. Okay, good. So now that we've seen um, an example of this in action, let's look at what the proof does. Okay, so let's let D be a divisor of N. And so we're just going to assume that it's a natural number, so we won't um, write that at all of the steps. And then consider the following set. We'll call it S sub D. And so this will be all integers M. And those integers satisfy two rules. So first, they live between 1 and N. And the second is the GCD of M and N equals D. Okay, good. So now we're going to rewrite this set a few ways um, in order um, to make it work for our needs. And the first way that we're going to rewrite this set is as follows. So this is all M and Z such that 1 is between M and N and the GCD of M over D and N over D equals 1. So you know if two natural numbers have a GCD of D, then that means you can divide D out of each of them and you're left with two natural numbers that have a GCD of 1. Okay, great. But now we can rewrite this one as follows. So that this is equal to all K in the integer. So I've changed my dummy variable in here just to make it a little bit less confusing maybe. And this will be where 1 where k goes from 1 to n over d, and the GCD of k with n over d equals 1. Okay, great. So it's pretty clear that this uh, middle set is equal to this last set as, as well, because in this case, um, we don't need to take... Um, counting these m values all the way through when you're dividing by d is the same thing as counting these k values up to n over d. Okay, good. But now notice this set is exactly equal to a number that we know, and that is phi of n over d, because it's all the relatively prime numbers to n over d. Okay, good. And now we're going to look at the following claim. So the following claim is this, that is um, 1, 2, up to n. So the set containing 1, 2, up to n is equal to the union of all the d that divide n of sd. Okay, good. So um, that should be uh, pretty clear from uh, what we did before, but maybe uh, we'll uh, look at it uh, really quick. Um, and that's because if you take 
L in this set one, two, up to N. Notice that L is an element of um, S sub GCD of um, L and N. Great. So we know that the GCD of L and N is a divisor of N. So it's a common divisor of L and N. So in particular, it's a divisor of N. So this is one part of our claim. And another part of our claim is the following. And that is SD intersect with SD prime is equal to the empty set if D is not equal to D prime. Okay. So in other words, if you've got uh, two things that divide in, well, um, and you intersect their sets that are built out of that, you get the empty set. And so this is also pretty clear because um, otherwise s the, the, the element that's in both of these sets would have two different GCDs when you take them with D, but that would mean that the GCD was not a well-defined function, so we couldn't really go any further, and there would be no point in defining the GCD in the first place. Um, okay, good. So I'll clean up the board, and then we'll start from these two facts that we've established in order to prove the rest. Okay. Okay, so we left off with two facts, and I was a little bit sloppy in the last... Uh, in the last board, but I'll clean it up here. The number of elements in SD is equal to phi of n over d, not SD. SD is a set and phi is a, it gives you a number, so the number of elements in SD is phi over, of n over d. And then we also know that the union of all of these SDs um, is the set from 1 to n, all those natural numbers, and then if you intersect any of them, you get the empty set. So this gives you a disjoint union. So these two facts right here, give you the following. So n equals the sum over all divisors of n of SD. Because notice that's just the same thing as measuring the size of this set two different ways. So there's obviously n elements in this set, but then this set is the same, and the number of elements in this set is the sum of all of these, and I should put a number here, we're taking the number of elements in SD. Okay, great. And that really hinges on the fact that you have this uh, intersection, intersecting to the, to the empty set rule. Okay, good. So now from here, we can say that this is equal to the sum of all over all divisors of n of phi of n over d. Okay, good. And now um, we're almost there, and uh, we can finish this off by the following. So now let's notice... If D divides N, that means that N equals D times E for some natural number, but that means that um, D equals N over E for some E that divides N. So in other words, what this means is that these two sets are the following. So these two sets are uh, the same, and that is the set of all D such that D divides N. So that's the same thing as the set of all N over D such that D divides N. Great. And then this fact means that we can replace this sum with the following. So n equals the sum of all over all divisors of n of phi of d. So instead of summing over this set, we're summing over this set, but these two sets are the same. And so that finishes the proof.